that's football. And that's what the major media so networks very intelligent. are moving they're away very from. Intelligent. Um, they're moving away from those guys, telling their story. And their story as Browns fans is incredible. It's passionate as whatever. Zero dollars and zero cents. Zero dollars. Who recovers in this town? Rose and Blue, our newest, our youngest fan of Pro Football Network. Souvenir bag, free. It's not, it's not a bomb, sir. You got it. We ain't gonna hurt you. We ain't gonna bite you. Pro Football Network. We're on Trey Wingo and Tony Paul, Philadelphia. We're in Cleveland, Ohio. That's right. That's right here. And we're in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio here for the 2021 NFL Draft. It is freaking great. I am having a great time here. It is a blast. Beautiful Cleveland. I ain't been here in about 20 years, but it's a blast. The NFL draft is here. We got our guy yesterday. Did you? The process, Did you get your guy? Hey, that's what everybody when, said. When, you, when, the, when the Eagles were on the clock, because they traded up with the, the hated Dallas Cowboys, what yeah. were you thinking? I, you know, that sometimes you got to make a deal with the devil. The enemy of your enemy is your, your friend. friend. That's right. And that's right. And we, first off, it was so fun to watch the Dallas Cowboys cry a little bit because they didn't get their guy. That's right. And then all of a sudden, you know, we trade up with them to get our guy That's to right. make sure that the Giants, the Giants get their guy. You oh, over two yeah. guys. I there you it. go. I love it. That's beautiful for me. That's I, awesome. That was a beautiful night. Raining and everything, it didn't matter. It was beautiful. Can you give me an Eagles chant? E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles, go birds! Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, brother. That was fins up there. Put my fins up there. Fins up. Jalen Waddle and Jalen Phillips. There we go. Yeah, I see you. So you guys are in Cincinnati. The, the, the game. Are, are sitting in the upper deck. Kick. We're sitting in the upper deck. It's just a great game. We're going wild. There's no way the Dolphins are going to lose this game. Feeling it's confident, silent. Then all of a mouth. sudden, like middle of third quarter, it starts turning. The tide starts turning. And you could, you could literally feel the stadium shaking and the momentum turning. Like they talk about it on TV. The momentum is turning. Like you don't think that's a real thing, but you could feel it in the stadium. No, you could literally, I'm like, there's no way the Dolphins can overcome the momentum that the Bengals are piling up with. There's just the fans going nuts. And then, you know, the fourth quarter comes and this music starts blaring and the Dolphins literally drive after drive just doing terrible. I think I looked at it after and the Dolphins could have kneeled down on every drive from there on out and still won the game. Yeah, just ran the water boy technique. Yeah, but uh... Then there was one part at the end of the game where Ryan Tannehill dropped back to pass. This was actually his demise in Miami. Got tackled to the ground, hurt his shoulder, and uh, from there on out was not the same QB. He was out for several weeks. And I could see Adam Gase just sitting on the bench by himself, trying to come up with a game plan with two minutes left. Like, that's not going to work. Laramie Tunsil so, had just gotten hurt, and Gase dials up a long developing play yeah. action play. Yeah. The left tackle gets destroyed from the snap, and Tannehill just and, and gets so, crushed. And so now the Bengals fans are all on our faces, and it's just, we're miserable now. You see, it felt like first of all, you absolutely deserved this. We from deserved fans. it 100%. <laughs> okay. We deserved right, it 100%. Let's be, let's be the very first clear three about that. quarters was like a commercial where it's in black and white before, and then the rest of it is in color. But for yeah. the Bengals fans, so the first three quarters, it felt like maybe there was 25% capacity at yeah, the stadium. Right. There's like no one there. You could hear Dolphins fans. It was like when we went to MetLife Stadium yeah. and Dolphins fans just took over. And in the fourth quarter, it seemed like everybody and their grandma was now in their seat talking back at us. And oh, you had a lot to say the first three quarters. Yeah, I don't hear you saying a whole faces. lot right now. As we are alluding to, the Bengals win the game. So we're walking out of the stadium. I mean, obviously thousands of people. So we lose each other and walking up the street. And we all get back to the hotel. There's like, there's eight of us at the game or something like that. We get back to the hotel, we all go into uh, Sutton's room, I think it was, and Sutton's nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. It's like the hangover. You had one job, don't literally, lose Sutton. Literally, literally, don't lose Sutton. And we're walking back, and like, where's Sutton? I'm like, he must have gotten left with the crowd, something. I'm like, okay, he'll be back in a few minutes. And 20 minutes goes by, Sutton's not back. And we start calling him, no answer. Another 20 minutes goes by, no answer. And now we're starting to freak out a little bit. We're like, he'll get here. And then literally like it's an hour and a half and he's still not there. And I'm panicking now because I'm like, I have to call his wife and tell her that we have no <laughs> idea where he is. We thought he either got into a fight and got arrested or is just passed out drunk somewhere on the side of the street. And either <laughs> both choices were bad. I just, I just want to be clear, this is all the result of the, of Dolphins. the Dolphins. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Miami <laughs> Dolphins losing this to is what, this is the, what the Dolphins Cincinnati do. Bengals in like a basic regular season game. Yeah, this right, is what they but did it is the, the culmination of 
just miserable. It's it's just the the cherry on yeah, like the years of investing into the Dolphins. The Dolphins fan. And so I'm literally, I have a cell phone in my hand. I'm like, I'm calling Jennifer, his wife, and I'm going to tell her that we have no idea where Sutton is. I had the phone in my hand. I had the caller ID popped up. And Sutton walks to the room and says, hey guys, what's up? And I'm like, are you f***ing kidding me right now? Where the f*** were you? He goes, I was walking over the bridge to Kentucky. I got lost. <laughs> All right, so, so, so the question is- The stadium's here. There's a huge bridge and Kentucky's, remember, we were in Ohio. And Sutton comes back and tells us he got lost in Kentucky because he went to the wrong side of the bridge. And literally the hotel was like five minutes from the stadium. There was no reason <laughs> to get lost. Well, so the complete the, opposite way. It the just, complete um, opposite yeah. way. Yeah. Just, that's where you went. The, the question that needs to be answered, where were you <laughs> and why were you in Kentucky? Well, so I had walked on the bridge, which I didn't take to get to the stadium, but I thought, you know what, this bridge will surely lead me to my hotel. Wait, you're, you, so to be clear, your intent was to get back to the hotel? Yes. And you thought going via Kentucky back into... I a, thought, you know, well, the a bridge scenic route didn't would... take. Right. There was no was bridge gonna... to get back to the hotel. There was okay. no bridge to get back to the hotel. There was zero reason to take a bridge. And... <laughs> I'm the type of person, like when I'm talking to someone on the phone, I, I pace around. So I was so lost in my drunken thoughts about Ryan Tannehill. Is he going to be the Miami Dolphins starting quarterback? Uh, what's going to happen the rest of this year? I had put money down on the Dolphins to win. Of course, they blew that as well. So there was all this, all these negative vibes circulating in our brain at this point. And it was kind of like, rock bottom for our Dolphins fandom. But it Twitter was a disaster that day, as it always is, but even more so today. And we're hosting this podcast on a big network. And so our mentions are a complete dumpster fire. And so that was getting to us and, you know, trying to defend Adam, Ta Adam Gase, Ryan Tannehill, this and that. And we're sitting in the parking lot after the game when he finally gets back, getting ready to go out for more drinks and, and food. And we're just miserable because the Dolphins make us miserable. And this is fandom at its highest, right? Because you just get so down. And luckily, we've learned a few things, thanks to you, Brett, you know, helping us, <laughs> helping us grow up a little bit. But uh, we were just sitting there like, we can't do this anymore. Why are we making ourselves so miserable? And then we went out, and then I'm thinking like overnight, ideas start popping up in my head. And, and I go, why don't we cover all 32 teams? Like, let's just see. So, so, so the Dolphins <laughs> made you so upset that you were like, you know what? I want to experience this times 32. Well, <laughs> we wanted to see if all the other fan bases were as toxic as the Dolphins fan base was after a loss. <laughs> really, that was the intent. And it's like, there's no way that oh, this is only the Dolphins fan base. This has to be every fan base out there. Or like, let's see like which ones are the worst, right? Or which ones are the best? Which ones get behind their team and which ones just jump on each other? And so I'm like, I think I want to do this. And so the next morning, we had to drive Sutton back up to Cleveland to drop him off on our way home. And about halfway through the car ride, I go, Sutton, I, I want to start a website covering 32 teams. I'm going to think about it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it, but I think I want to do it um, just to get out of this Dolphins, Dolphins maze. And, and so I think it was about a week later where mm -hmm. I texted him and Howitz at the time. And I said, I said to them, I said, uh, I'm starting a website covering all 32 teams. Either you're with yeah. me or you're not, but I'm starting this website. In your time here, a couple months now, yeah. how does the culture, the community, the vision reflect on our brand in relation to those things at those other places? So I think I'm biased because I've helped kind of to shape all of that. Yeah. When I came in, Matt was like, what do you think our culture should be and what do you think our policies should be? So I've had like a heavy hand in writing all of those and I've tried to make it um, an environment that is healthy, like work-life balance, even though all of us are psychos and we don't <laughs> do it. None of us sleep. Yeah. Um, like we should have work-life balance and there's no reason that we don't other than we love our football. own drive. Yeah. Right. Um, and also that like we are targeting what every, like, every individual person is best at mm -hmm. and extracting that from them. Yeah. So like we could interview someone for me, for instance, who you thought like, oh, she'll just see like a marketing specialist or a marketing manager. Right. And then Matt interviewed me and through the process, it was like, oh no, you need to be different than that. 
right. which I appreciated because I thought so too. Um, and I feel like as we go on, we we kind of take that focus with everyone that we we interview with. It's like a position starts in a certain way. We think we need this person. Mm -hmm. And then as we interview everyone, we're like, oh, actually, this person makes more sense because they can do X, Y, Z that we didn't even think about. Right, right. Which I think is unique to PFN. Um, in general, <laughs> but also I like really congratulate us for being innovative enough to think in that way. Yeah. Um, and I think even our day-to-day -day business practices, like we don't have a normal schedule, which is good and bad. Like I can be on a date and I have to like <laughs> answer Brett's texts. Um, or there's like a day I have a migraine and like I can slack off for a day because I can pick it up tomorrow. Right. Like I think everyone is very conscious of the individual people and not just the company. Yeah. Um, which I think is what actually sets us apart. Like we all care about each other as individuals and then individually we all come together and like make this badass company. I truly think that. I think we're on a, on a nice path for, for continued growth, especially now with Trey Wingo on board and we got you know some other projects in the works. Um, it's an exciting time. Yeah, man, it, look, a, a year ago, you made your initial investment and went towards the mock draft simulator, but that's really all we had, the mock draft simulator and Tony Pauline. Mm -hmm. um, a year forward, we have a full-fledged video production department, we have an audio production department, we have uh, full-time staff. At the time, we had no full-time staff. Now we have 14 full-time staff that's members insane. with benefits that we're paying salaries to. I mean, it, it's incredible to see how it's gone. And we have a Trey Wingo. It's like the Avengers, we have a Hulk. Brand ambassador and a contributor, really excited Which will help this. hopefully, you know, continue to push us forward. By the way, one last thing I wanted to mention about our growth. Um, so again, I brought on, again, I brought on my capital as an investment. But aside from that, we have, and I'm sure I know you know, zero debt on the books. We have no other investment capital. Correct. All, we went from zero full-time staff to 14 full-time staff. Uh, and all the growth with uh, zero additional capital. It's all been organic, which no is capital, absolutely no insane. No loans, no, no debt, no debt in the books. Um, our financials look phenomenal um, and it's all organic. So yeah, man. It's First thing I lead with when I talk to people, we're a cash flow positive yeah. business from day one. Um, it's lean and mean, but I don't think any lean and mean startup has ever gotten to where they are as fast as we have and we just continue to go up. So for sure. Yeah, man, let's keep it going. Yeah, brother. All right. Are up. Wait, the, the way the Cowboys traded with the Eagles trade for up. two picks we trade with the Eagles. The Eagles? Yeah. Hey guys, we got compensation on here. Kent Platt, actually, yes, Dallas traded number ten to Philly for its first and third round pick. First and third. Thank you. Is Dallas gonna let Philly come up for a QB or an offensive tackle or Devonte Smith? Devonta Smith. Devonta Smith. 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 Devonta Smith. Three Alabama players in the top ten. No way. And none of them named Mac Jones. Seriously? Yeah. Say it again. Say it again. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Everyone breathes. Let the site breathe. You ain't first. You're last. It, is it the site or is it? Because my my uh, web lunch is locked. My internet just locked up. No, what's the say?